It's a new week. Let us begin. My first dislike. You know, I thought it would hurt more than it does. I can bear this. I can stand this. Yep. I can stand that. Way to go for the run. Pookie run. On a Sunday. Oh, I usually do these runs on Friday. Friday run. Tuesday run. Friday run. But this week it was a Tuesday night border on Wednesday morning run. Or last week even. And today, Sunday. But so that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I need to stick to my routine. I need to work at that discipline. It's, it's not okay time to do things. On all those allocated times, that's when I do those things. And any other time, I do not. That's the way it should be. But, yeah. That's it. Are you ready to? Yeah, I'll just yeah. And how much do you want in this? <laughs> that because Callan was jumping on you. Now he's going to do it again. I tried to be a fair king. I tried to be a just king. But I am your king. If you give me any cheek. Yeah. 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 I can't see them. Yeah, it's part of the cinematic. Oh. oh. What? You're not a good camera lady. Well, I need a bloody script. Yeah, you just come up on the spot. Improvise. Make it professional looking. Oh, this is a failure, I tell you that. It's not, it's actually bits of it are quite funny. I thought you were going to get the dogs to bow. I'm still king. Why did you get the dogs to bow? Bow to me, subordinates. Like me and click subscribe and like and share. Third coffee today. I don't think I've got a problem. I think I just, just enjoy caffeine. Just enjoy the buzz, to be honest. It's good to get the buzz in the morning. Currently uh, doing, currently going through one lecture that's been uploaded. Um, I'll go into a bit of detail of what we're actually learning. Advanced cognition in the social brain. Cognition recap. So, 
basically what we're going on about is, or what we're learning even, is uh, for this week, the load is this creases. Let's see if I can paraphrase it without even looking at the thing. Um, what we were learning was this crisis in which they found out that a large percentage of studies were inaccurate in the results because there's a pressure to, for a scientist, for good science we need good results and for good for a good career you need good results so there's a bit of a conflict of interest there um, and this has caused some uh, this is the wrong slide this has caused some issues caused a bit of a crisis a repl replication crisis so when these studies there was a study done to try and replicate so many other studies and in doing this they found out that like a huge percentage, I don't I can't remember the percentage, I need to read this. Uh, they found out a huge huge percentage of these studies that were to be replicated couldn't be replicated. If that's kind of like the I hope so. Uh, come on, load up. Yeah, yeah, what's best for science, what's best for scientists. Uh, replication crisis. And this began with the idea that humans had the ability to foresee the future. A study on this was post was presented in a in a big journal. And uh, and this, you know, surely this couldn't be real. So they they found out from this that that uh, that there was an issue, and the the study that I'm vlogging right now, mum. The um, this let me to. Yourself. Yeah. No, oh, I'm recording the screen. Oh. Um, the big, the big study that looked into. I'm sounding like such a simpleton. The big study that looked into the all the other studies to see if they were replicatable, replicatable, which is called the Open Science Collaboration, 2015. They found out that only 36% of the findings were replicated. So that's not quite a, quite a, the opposite of a bump. That's quite a stump. Um, a lot of type one errors. They, they need this down to type one errors. They say false positives. Um, So yeah, what happens when you put researchers under pressure to get good results, you get questionable research practices. And it goes on about harking and p-hacking. P-hacking being... Uh, manipulating data in such a way as to turn a non-significant p-value into a significant one. A p-value signifies whether or not the results are significant or not. Whether or not humans, a study on humans foreseeing the future, whether or not the results are significant or not. Manipulating the data in such a way as to turn a non-significant p-value into a significant one. And these include optional stopping of data collection. Optional stopping of data collection, i.e. testing participants until an effect becomes significant. Um, or post-hoc manipulation of outliers. 
decided only after looking at the data to exclude long reaction times. So that's two ways you can manipulate that. Uh, testing multiple variables and only reporting significant effects. Conducting different tests use covariates to achieve significant effects. Conducting different tests use covariates to achieve the, the Conducting different tests use covariates to achieve significant effects. Significant effects. Covariates. What's a covariate? Covariate. Covariate is something that gets changed. Covariate. What is a covariate? In general terms, covariates are characteristics excluding the actual treatment of the participant in an experiment. If you collect data on characteristics before you run an experiment, you can use the data to see how your treatment affects different groups of populations. Covariates may affect the outcome in a study. For example, if you're running an experiment to see how corn plants tolerate drought, level of drought is the actual treatment, but isn't the only factor that affects how plants perform. Size is the known factor that affects tolerance levels, so you would run plant sizes as a covariate. Alright, okay. A covariate can be the independent variable, or it can be an unwanted confounding variable. Ah, uh, okay. Adding a covariate to a model can increase the accuracy of your results. Okay. Okay. We got there. We got there. Okay. So, testing multiple variables and only report... No. Conducting different tests use covariates to achieve significant effects. Yeah. So that's another example of p-hacking, which is unwanted. Uh Different, conducting tests use covariates to achieve significant effects. Only reporting experiments which supported hypotheses. Only reporting experiments which supported hypotheses. Yeah, okay, that all makes sense. Hypothesis after results known. Harking. So that's... That gives you a... a yeah, I can't remember this. That gives you exploratory research is confirmatory allows authors to present exploratory research as confirmatory. Hypothesis is hypothesizing after results are known. If you don't know what hypothesizing is, it is when you predict a study. So in the example you would say humans can foresee the future or the result it's hypothesized that from the results humans will foresee the future, will be able to foresee the future or if you were to if you're experimenting an independent variable of that study, I don't know what the independent variable is but let's just say the independent variable of foreseeing the future is predicting a uh -huh. or depend, one minute dependent variable, if the dependent variable which is the result if that in that in that example study that I just said um, that could be see if this was a presentation it would uh, oh my god fail um, uh, the dependent variable could be for for uh, predicting numbers in a sequence or something so. That's that could be a, the hypothesis. Is that what I was saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, so sixty. How prevalent are these practices? Sixty percent admitted collecting more data after seeing whether the results were significant. Fifty percent admitted selectively reporting studies that worked. Sixty percent admitted failing to report all of studies. Dependent measures, 54% admitted to claiming to have predicted an unexpected finding. Um, as well as that, um, it also excludes non-weird populations. And this is non-weird populations, that stands for uh, white, educated, industrialised, 
Uh, what's the R? Oh, uh, what's the R and D? Oh, that's annoying. I do not. Weird. Psychology. It's gonna just come up with weird psychology files, isn't it? No. Westernized, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. So a lot of psychology studies are only on students in general in the West and generally students in the West. What is this? Generally, students in the West are we weird participants. W e i r d. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't bring into consideration um, other, you know, folk with ethnicities, poorer ethnicities, and you know whatnot. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, later on, this this just goes on about. Uh, it also goes on about power posing as well. Uh, power posing. The idea of power posing to give you. A, a boost in physiological effect is also bull. It's also tripe. Um, uh, which was interesting. Um, and then the second part of this goes into. I'm not going to cover it, but I'll. What was it? What did, what did it say? What did it say? It just went on on about the remedies, the solution. To, to the to this issue, and it gave it gave examples of uh, of journals that now take in they receive part of the of the uh, of the papers to begin with, so that you can't amend the hypothesis. Um, okay, that no the. There was something else as well. What well, was the other solution? That's annoying me. This is good. This is making me regurgitate it, and that this way I'm going to remember it. This is a good thing to do. I'm doing a good thing here. I don't know if it's going to be that entertaining. Maybe a little bit interesting. It's going to be a pain nasty edit it though. I'll tell you that. Hopefully it's actually picking up on the screen as well. That's the dog barking. Having a coffee, I've already shared that. I do like a coffee. I want to try these new tropics. Apparently they're good for you. Good for your cognitive whatnots. See if I was a psychologist, I would just be like that, your cognitive whatnots. I wouldn't they? When they use the official terms, I'd get all Cockney's Cockney rhyming, but um, so yeah, pre-registered, which is what I was saying. Another other initiatives, psychological science accelerator it doesn't actually say, doesn't actually say on the slide what that does uh, okay oh well oh well that's enough information what I've given you there okay so hopefully that and I've also got this paper I need to read I've not read it yet but I'll read that and that's supposed to go into more detail I'll share anything if anything is anything's new that's not in the slides so yeah that's my that's what I'm doing today on a Monday tomorrow I'll look into another study and another modules lectures and then on Wednesday I'll look into this current mo uh, modules lectures because they've posted two yep and I'll also on Tuesday I'll prepare for a tutorial that's happening on Thursday <gasps> Or next Thursday, pardon me. So yeah, yeah. Now I'm just recording for the sake of it because I've got nothing else to say. I do like just speaking. <laughs> Today's Monday. We're doing a bun supper. Me and the family on Zoom. Well, me, my mum and the family on Zoom. 
Uh, so that's me. That's my current attire. Doody 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 do. Kill looking legs. Looks like he's wearing a barber shop jacket. Looks like he's going to go hunting or something. You just need to get a wee, wee hat for him. Wee Benny. Wee Benny? Wee cup. There we go. Just need some green wellies. Tuesday today. Um, today I've, I've been learning about um, language and, and language education and, and the early years. So basically, just like the when kids are about three, three to five, and what sort of school, what sort of schoolage they're entitled to, <coughs> like nurseries and whatnot. Yeah, interesting. Like interesting. Uh, America's a bit behind the curve on. Was it again? America's behind the curve on. I think it was free education. Yeah, America's behind the curve on. Early on, free early years education. Which is interesting. How cute is this baby? <laughs> was watching Dustin Poirier, Poirier, all the struggle pimps and that, Dustin Poirier's, Conor McGregor's opponent, Dustin Poirier, uh, was watching his post-fight interview, um, and he was saying, this time around, fighting Conor McGregor, he didn't feel that aura that he first felt the first time he was in the cage. And he felt the first time he f was in the cage with Conor McGregor, he felt like he, w he felt like a deer in the headlights. And this time he was a lot more confident. But he was saying about the aura, and uh, I found that interesting because I, I actually think that before Conor McGregor had Instagram, he he was a lot bigger. Like Dustin Poirier in that in that in that interview, as part of that, he was saying that he's just a man. Back then. He, he was bigger than a man. He was bigger than he was bigger than a human. He didn't say that, but like that's what he was kind of meaning. I think Instagram made him just look like another person. I think before he had Instagram, he was larger than life, and then that kind of ruined him a wee bit. There's something about that in Art of War by Robert Greene about. Uh, about overexposing yourself, the, the the more you hide and the the less you, you show your face, the larger the the larger that larger than life you come across, and you know the, you've got you carry more mystique and your enemy your enemy sees you as a bigger threat or whatever. Yeah, that's my opinion. Instagram ruined Conor McGregor. I've got yesterday's haggis here, having it today. Mash, turnips or neeps. Meat haggis and a wee bit of my mum's vegetarian haggis. Haggis is a very nutritious meal. Oh sorry, that was me. That was me moving my knee there, shaking the thingy. Um, aye, haggis is a very nutritious meal, full of fat, protein. It's got oats in there, so you've got minerals. Yeah, and you got your potassium, more potassium there, I don't know what else turnips have in them. Maybe some vitamins of some sort. Oh, the camera's fogging up with the heat. I think it's vitamin C. Vitamin C, you think? Nah, I don't know. Nah, I think you'll get that in citrus, citrus food. Yeah, I think it's vitamin C. It could be sweet as well, actually. It tastes delicious, though. You must get it in something else, because what would other people that live in places that there were no citrus fruit, yeah. they didn't take a vitamin C. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. I'm videoing right now. What's the magic words when you finish your meal? 
Yummy, yummy, yummy. Good for your tummy. That's it. <laughs> Last week I was on about, I was complaining. Oh, just dropped you there. Just dropped my phone. <coughs> Last week I was complaining uh, about about living in a, in a controlled environment and and life just being a wee bit too cushioned and a wee bit too like like I'm living in a bubble sort of thing. Um, so this week, today, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm gonna fast for three days just to increase the value of food to me. You know what I mean? Like if this was a survival, if if you lived. In a in a harsh time, in a harsh environment, and food was scarce, you did value you'd value every slice of bread, every everything, everything you came across, you'd totally be it would shine bright to you. So if I go without food for three days, I will see if if food shines a wee bit brighter for me. You know, so that's that's one of the things I'm going to abstain from to see if that if that does work. Um, and coffee as well, because I drink a lot of coffee, so. If I go without coffee for 30 days, I'll, I'll value coffee more and be like, oh yay, fuck I, coffee. So, yeah. If you've got any suggestions of things that I could give up, comment below. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really entertainment, but if I went without that, then I would seriously be twiddling my thumbs. I'd have to make my own entertainment. It could be a puppet show or something, or, yeah. A wee shadow show, a wee Chinese shadow show, you know, with your fingers. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, okay, right, I'm cutting this. Bye. Today I have been learning about bilingualism. Um, pretty interesting. This, 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 uh, this slide. Basically, questions whether or not there's a bilingual advantage in, in cognitive ability. I'm sure it concludes with saying there's not. And I can't find the actual slide saying no, it's, it's not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this camera again. Yeah, who sees it here? The lack of any group differences suggests that the routine use of more than one language variety does not lead to a cognitive advantage. So, you know more than one language. If you know more than one language, you're not intelligent. The second presentation, or third presentation on this, uh, Yeah, this one, a lot of interest and stuff in it. I'll, I'll go over the. Um, Scottish Standard English. In Scotland, there's four different languages. There's Scottish Standard English, there's Gaelic, there's Scots, and there's the British Sign Language. Um, Scottish Standard English is the one that they speak, the one I'm kind of speaking, the one they speak. Or the one I am currently speaking uh, is the one they speak on the news. Um, but some words are a bit different to. Some words don't come into it. Uh, one, one of it. Some words 
in Scottish Standard English aren't used in normal English or like other Standard Englishes, Englishes. You get to the point here. Um, please use other door out with normal opening hours. Apparently, this is something that you don't. That's that's common. That's only found in Scot Scot Scottish Standard English. Um, and something else. If you see something like the cars needing cleaned, that's normal in Scotland. But in other forms of English, apparently, that's quite strange. The cars needing clean. I suppose it's kind of like personifying the, the car, the car's needing cleaned, but that's just standard, that's normal. Um, Gaelic, not very many people speak Gaelic, 1.1% of the population of Scotland speak Gaelic, apparently it's up here in the, the west, mostly the west, um, there's a bunch of Scottish words, Yaldi, Blether, Ken, Ken means I, to know, blether is a talk, you know, oh, I've been blethering a lot of shite, I've been blethering a lot of rubbish, shite is rubbish, it's just the word shit with an e at the end, sounds better, so it's better than shit, shit sounds so American, not that I've got anything wrong with Americans, but shite is a lot better, That's some, I think if there's any Americans watching this, adopt the word shite, because it's a better word. Um, there's tons of words here. Banter means to have a laugh, a joke, joke about. Uh, or is, it, is that what it says? Conversation in many forms, usually a session of witty repartee. Yeah. Uh, a bairn as a kid. Peely, peely wally. Not looking very well. Your pus. I've said that and I've used that word in another video before. That means your face. Your rad. A Raj, uh, what is a Raj again? Someone that's just a bit of a funny, I think. What does it say there? What does that say? I can't read it. Someone, Mum, what does a Raj mean? What does a Raj mean? R A D G E. A Raj. You're a Raj, you're a pure Raj. Uh, I don't know. I need to... Uh, is it in there? Yeah, it's a Scots word. I've heard it before. Raj, in a ra is it Rage? Nah, you're a pure Raj. A wild, crazy or violent person. Oh, that's not one I'm familiar with. You're a pure Raj. Okay. So, they're saying here that's a Geordie phrase. Or to go rad just to get rid of it. Oh, yeah, okay. It's probably more kind of rage they're saying here. In form of Scots. Is sausage is a. Is, is sausage is a, a Dandonian word? No, Scottish. Scottish word. Mm -hmm. So you, these are some other Scots words. Moose instead of mouse. Sausages instead of sausages. Heart instead of heart. Lugs instead of ears. Bairns instead of children. Tatty instead of a potato. I think I've said that in another video, Tati, Tati's, uh, baffies instead of slippers, I've never even known that before. I, I used to say that all the time, Did baffies. You? Mm -hmm. And then heim instead of house instead of house. And that's the Danish Or heim, you could say heim as well, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Heim at home. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I suppose. Uh, I like you'll be sharing this. What? I like you'll be sharing this. I don't this. know, hopefully. Um, yes. mm -hmm. One of the conclusions here in the in this lecture was that dialects perhaps should be considered bilingual mm -hmm. as opposed to monolingual. So knowing a di ha being ve well versed in a dialect may constitute you being bilingual. That's so I cool. thought that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So I, re I was replaying last week's video. I got to the bit where the Native American I'll show you guys the Native American and I've just looked at where I've placed the Native American where I looked at where I placed them last week that's unfortunate yeah. <laughs> these here are 
wee balls from a uh, uh, the wee balls that make a noise. I think my mum got them from Russia. But yeah, it was a wee bully. So I've decided, despite what I was saying about um, the value and increasing the value of food and whatnot. <coughs> I'm going to not bother fasting. I'm going to stop doing it on Wednesday as well. I just find it more annoying than anything. I don't find it tough, I just find it annoying. It's just like a constant, oh I can't eat, oh I can't eat, oh that shit, I can't eat. So... So, uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to carry on intermittent fasting, so I'll, I'll, I'll skip breakfast and finish tea about nine. Finish eating at nine and have lunch at one ish. Get a 16 hour plus fasting window. But that's enough. I'd, I'm not even losing any weight or anything. So I enjoy food too much. Am I quitting? I don't know. I, the, I, I've got a pretty high value of food as well. Like, I value food a lot. Even a cup of tea, I'm like, oh yeah, I love a cup of tea. I love this cup of tea. You know, I'm not far off vlogging a cup of tea like I've done it in the past. So, I've vlogged a cup of coffee. So, I don't need to increase the value of anything. Um, but am I quitting? Yeah, I am. Um, does it matter? No. It doesn't. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. So I'm about to order a donor and chips, and maybe some nachos. Because life is for living, my friend. A capitalist society doesn't give you much. Well, it gives you a lot. It gives you too much. It gives you everything. So you may as well enjoy it. No, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Each day at a time. I don't know. I'm gonna cut this. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Got absolutely no sleep last night. Um, or tonight, or last night. Yeah, last night. Um, why? Because they decided to have a coffee or two at night time. Two coffees. I had two coffees at night. Don't know why. This is fucking stupid. have a good day. <laughs> I'm away. I randomly decided I'm going to make a video using another camera. I'm going to make a video uh, on Conor McGregor and about, about uh, I'm going to just speculate about his, well you'll see it, I'll, I'll have been posted by the time this video will come up so check it out. So, <clears throat> so just after making two videos with my camera here now I'm making a video about making videos. Have I gone too far? Perhaps. Uh, let me just set this up here on the, the, the tripod. <coughs> As you may have guessed, so I've already said it previously on the, in this vlog. Um, I like to just speak. That is quite an enjoyable thing for me to do. And especially considering right now that I've got so many hours in the day free, speaking makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> I literally, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. It's raining. I might go for a run later on, but that's it and upload these videos, that's it. And these are so empty, they're so empty, it's ridiculous. I need a job, I need a full-time job.
Uh, hopefully we'll go to Tillybuck. Hopefully we get some good weather this week. Uh, we'll go to Tillybuck or we, as if the camera is a person. That, that's that's what lockdown's doing to me. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully we can. You and me, you and me. Hopefully we can go to Tillybuck or hopefully we can walk the dogs and yeah. Watching the last salmon eye with my dogs. I'm not sure if you can go Last salmon eye with Tom Cruise. Young Sheldon. I couldn't think of anything possible, of course. I decided I'm not going to bother watching uh, The Last Samurai. I'll watch it later. I'll watch it another day. I'm too. I feel too tired. I feel too dodgy, to be honest. I feel weird. I don't know what I want right now, to be honest. I want to be asleep. My mum's slow cooking a lamb shoulder. Looks pretty good. Pretty damaged. Smells good as well. That's my tripod just came in. Quite a beast. It folds up into into here, up into that length. So it's pretty smart and you've got the beast swivel. I can't do it with one hand. Um yeah. I don't know if it's something else. What was I gonna say? Yeah, I'm loading an MMA video. I hope I don't deter people on my channel. I don't want to make it an MMA channel, it's it's just a general John Reed channel full of videos of mine. I'll continue with the vlog, I'll, I'll keep that MMA free. So stay tuned, stay subscribed for vlogs, for these vlogs. You will get the product that you signed up for and better. The weather's still pretty miserable, which is annoying. Um, I would have, I would have, I would have taken you to Tilly Barker, but sadly not. Um, hopefully, we get a sunny day this weekend. Meant to be running tomorrow, maybe not tomorrow, maybe Sunday. We'll see. Which is next week's pod, uh, vlog. So in this vlog, I, I probably won't be going to Tilly Barker. Look at this, got my mum's made a lamb shoulder joint. She made it in the slow cooker there. How long did it take to cook? Eight hours. Mm -hmm. Eight hours. It Looks good though. It Looks really good. <coughs> Looks really good. <coughs> Just choked in a pee there. It's in my, well not practice, just given testing out my tripod here, in which you are placed on. Um, just having my cup of tea here. <sighs> we watched Gangs in New York. This film is, I think it's one of my favourite films. Um, the scene at the start where they're all getting into the fight. They're going to war, that's awesome. The coolest scene ever in TV. Or films. The cool, one of the coolest scenes in TV is probably... What's that one? What was that TV show by Matthew McConaughey? Where he plays a cop? Oh, True Detective. True Detective. The coolest scene on TV, I reckon, is on True Detective. That scene was like seven minutes long. And it follows him going through, going through a ghetto. If you've not watched that show, give that show a watch. I'd highly recommend that. Yeah, that's one of the best moments in TV. Season one of True Detective and season two of True Detective was also good, but the third one, I, I didn't think it was that good. But yeah, check out the first and second one. The first one's got that scene in it. That's it for this week, folks. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, or like, 
Like this if you like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you've got anything to say, leave a comment. And maybe a share as well if you think it's worthy of a share. Um, yep, I think that's it. Cool. Peace.